Good morning, everyone. This is Dewey, and my Tech Talk topic for today, today is how DNS caching makes your internet faster. Let's first understand a few acronyms and terms. DNS stands for Domain Name System. A domain is the name of a website. A URL, Universal Resource Locator, is a complete web address used to find a particular web page at a website. Basically, the DNS is a directory of names that are matched with numbers. The numbers in this case are IP addresses. Computers need to use numbers to communicate with each other more efficiently, accurately, and safely. So what is DN DNS caching? As defined by Brad Mitchell at LifeWire.com, it's a temporary database maintained by a computer's operating system that contains records of all recent or attempted visits to websites and other internet domains. In other words, a DNS cache is just a memory of recent DNS lookups that your computer quickly refers to to check out, to figure out how to load a website. The internet relies on the domain name system to maintain an index of all public websites and their corresponding IP addresses. You can think of it as a type of phone book. With a phone book, we don't have to memorize everyone's phone number, thankfully. In the same way, the DNS is used to avoid having to memorize a string of numbers connected with a website's IP address. Example, you type in a URL like lifewire.com and your web browser asks your router for the IP address. The router has a DNS server address stored. So it asks the DNS server to find the IP address of that host name. The DNS server finds the IP address that belongs to lifewire.com and then is able to understand the website you're asking for and loads the appropriate information. That's how the process works. There are tons of public DNS servers your network can use to speed up the conversion resolution process. It's still quicker to have a local copy or of the phone book, which is where the DNS caches come into play. The DNS cache on your computer attempts to speed up the process even more by handling the name resolution of recently visited addresses before the request is sent out to the internet. There are actually DNS caches at every hierarchy level of the lookup process that ultimately takes your computer uh, to your desired website. Each of those points in the process has a DNS cache for the same reason, which again is to speed up the whole process. A DNS cache can become poisoned or polluted when unauthorized domain names or IP addresses are inserted into it. Occasionally, a DNS cache may become corrupted because of technical glitches or administrative accidents. However, DNS cache poisoning is typically associated with computer viruses or other network attacks that insert invalid DNS entries into the cache. I've had that happen. Poisoning causes client requests to be redirect, redirected to the wrong destinations, which are usually malicious websites or pages full of advertisements. This poses a massive problem for popular websites. Example, if an attacker redirects your request for techforsenior.com to a website that looks like Tech for Senior, but really isn't, you might end up with being the victim of a phishing attack. Again, if the techforsenior.com record was poisoned and redirecting you to a strange website, flushing the DNS is a good first step to getting the regular techforsenior.com to work once again. I'll come back to DNS flushing in a moment. A DNS cache doesn't ever flush or reset itself, unfortunately. A user needs to manually execute a flush or make a DNS networking related configuration change for that to happen. Also, each DNS record has a time to live number in seconds associated with it, which tells a DNS cache how long it will be active until flushed away. On a Windows computer, you can see a list of your DNS records in your cache, including their TTL, time to live, by entering ipconfig space slash display DNS in your Windows search box or at a command prompt. 
Don't forget that space after IP config. Here's what a single page from hundreds looks like on my web, on my computer. Uh, now I have just three records out of hundreds or maybe thousands of, uh, you know, since whenever, since it was last flushed. Well, uh, notice each record has six elements, a record name, record type, time to live, TTL, which notice varies. The first one is almost 20,000 seconds. And the second is only 62. And then there's data length, they're all the same and a couple of other things going on. I understand that it's a little more complicated to display the DNS a cache, the DNS cache on a Mac computer. Consequently, I'd suggest that Mac users consult with Mac experts on how to uh, DN display the DNS cache. Now back to DNS flushing. Clearing your DNS cache removes all entries and deletes any invalid records as well. Also, it forces your computer to repopulate those addresses the next time you try accessing those websites. These new addresses are taken from the DNS server your network is set up to use. In a Windows or Mac, now both systems, flushing, which is resetting your DNS cache, is way more complex than simply viewing it. You might search for words, if you want to do it, you might search for words, something like uh, instructions flushing DNS for Windows or for Mac computer, whichever you use. A router usually has a DNS cache as well, which is why rebooting a router is often the first best troubleshooting step for router problems. You see, it's all coming together now. For the same reason, you might flush a DNS cache on your computer. You can also reboot your router to clear the DNS entries stored in its temporary memory. Some of you may recall my Tech Talk 19 called A Router Tail from early February in which I detailed how a Linksys or how Linksys tech support resolved a number of issues on my four-year-old Linksys AC1900 router. Got it working pretty well. Well, that turned out not to be the end of the story. Later, a few small issues began popping up. So I bought an inexpensive GE outlet timer, which turns off the power to my Motorman router for 30 minutes at 3 a.m. daily. So far, this appears, I've had it a week, and it appears to have resolved the issues that I was having. So it's a, it's a pretty good fix. Most people, most techies will agree. One more thing. If you've been with us here at TFS in recent months, you may recall that our co-host Ron Brown have talking about his orange tree at the place he and his wife Gail have here at Silbridge. Recently, he asked me to strip his tree of oranges. So Ron, you finally get to see a photo of the last 24 oranges on your wonderful navel orange tree. And by the way, that's Joanne, my bride of 60 years. Well, that's my Tech Talk story for today. And I'm really gonna be enjoying those oranges and Joanne enjoying them with me. Thanks for watching, stay safe and have a great day.